Bashir over the top of this small claim. Pithy's hanging on well for Groupame. He has Kevin Junietz with him as well. I know Yusu is there or thereabouts, and here he goes. Oh, this is where it gets interesting as well. Because we know, we know that they have been strong. He is in the team. Here she's been going for the bonuses. But we know the power he has, the reputation he has. And with four kilometers to go, Juan Ayuso has gone on the attack. Yeah, it was a perfect time in there when everybody was kind of on the rack. But he's not got a huge advantage in Little Trek with Gabri Zabi just kind of closing this one down. It's Barry and Victorious couldn't follow. Uh, just goes to show you how hard an effort it was by Ayuso. But He's only got about kind of 10, 15 metres now, and it doesn't look as if he's going to hold the peloton off now. Little gaps approaching to start to appear at the back of the shot at the base of your picture. Finn Fisher Black is the other UAE Emirates rider who's following nicely here. He's on the wheel of what looks to be Lawrence Pithy for Groupama FDJ. You can just see that Mars Person wearing 64 sits nicely on the wheel of Quinn Simmons. All the way up there is Antonio Tiberi following for Bahrain Victorious. And now Junietz makes it across as well. There's a rider two from Decathlon, Azure de Zella Mondial, EF Education, Easy Post riders are following in behind. And this is where it really picks up pace down the hill all the way to that flattish one and a half kilometers. Ayusa still pulling things along here and trying to make things difficult. That was huge. She's just a little further behind. Yeah, that was huge by uh, Gabri Zabier. He did that pretty much on his own. He's got Tiberi on the wheel. Um, but that was a big, big effort. And he realised he had to... Ooh, oh, another, another crash. crash. Another crash. It's the rider from Degatron who's been taken down. Could be Vindrami, who they were kind of working for. But Gabri Zabier still propped on the front here. 2.3 kilometres ago. They still have Mads Mad Pedersen there. But just when that happens, just a little bit of looking behind. Touch of the wheel in front, a bit of movement and you know day over but um little trek still looking good for this one with mads pedersen they've been acting as a team working as a team and uh, emmanuel gebrek zabia who started the year without a contract who soon came back into the team again after having ridden for the last couple of years proving he was one of the best domestics at his job in the world he's been brilliant all year and today he's vital again and look who's just appeared on the left hand side Mathieu Fodderpool has made it up onto the wheels now we've got a move on the right so Esteban Chavez on this little rise for EF Education easy post yeah a little bit of an acceleration not huge um, you know renowned as a, as a climber there but you know good on him making that effort but propped on the wheel of Mads Pedersen who, who only has uh, Quinn Simmons by the looks of things in, in front of him now is the uh, yellow jersey and race leader Matthew van der Poel we've got riders moving up as well for Paul Di Cometa they'll try to attack it's so unpredictable this one but it does keep coming back together yeah, but Xavier brought that last move together. It's Simmons now looking after the main man, Mars Pearson. And for the first time in a while, there's a little bit of looking around here. Mathieu Fonderpool starts and stays now right on the wheel of Pearson. And on his wheel, it's Lawrence Pithy who has that number 52 on his back with 144 on his back moving up on the right hand side. That's Mirko Maestri just behind him looking after his teammate Davide Piganzoli and Davide Baiz. You're looking in the centre for Serrano from that team as well. And now Kirsch is going to make his way up on the right hand side as they go under one kilometre to go. And he's going to be there to try and perform the lead out for Mas Pearson. Just on the wheel of Kirsch right now as the teammate moves up. It's a little bit of elbow and even shoulder stuff from Fondapool to the left hand side. You can see being boxed down, also leaning to the left there in the blue jersey. That's Christophe Laporte trying to keep his position up there. Robin Froidevaux is there on the right hand side in the black jersey, the former Swiss national champion too. Marvi Star with Milesi moving up. On the left it's uh, Gonzalo Serrano who's there as well. Here now goes Alex Kirsch as we're into the final few hundred metres on the wheel and ready to go. You can see that the main man, Mars Pedersen's there. Fred Wright's on the left hand side. Having to break on the right is Anthony Torgis and here goes Mars Pedersen now. It's Pedersen for Little Trek through the centre. On his wheel is Mathieu Fonopoul who's trying to come around. It's Pedersen going all the way. Fonopoul Paul is in the wheel. He stays there at the minute and can't get round. Froidevaux's there. It's Pearson through the centre. It's Mars Pearson who wins. Mathieu Fonopoul and Romain Froidevaux who are up there as well. And it was a try from Laporte, but it was not good enough to go in the end. It was the long lead out from just over the top of the hill from Gebrek Xavier. Then it was Simmons. 
then came Kirsch, and the main man finished it off. They were quiet all day long, but in the end, they shouted the loudest. It's Lidl Trek who win. And Mars Pearson, on the day they lost their leader, Skelmorza, brings delight to the team. A super sprint from Mars Pearson. And it should be that Macha Fodderpool keeps the race lead. Yeah, definitely well. Strong sprint, as expected from uh, Mads Pedersen. Just watch uh, Matthew van der Poel in this. He does challenge. He has to challenge. Just look at him. He, he moves out into the wind here. Not for long. Pop back in again. That just shows you how strong Mads Pedersen, when he gets into that position leading out, van der Poel tries again. And it's sit down. No, he's, he just doesn't have the legs uh, to come round him anymore. And uh, what was you say, up there in the black, taking third place there for Tudor Pro Cycling. But we see this, Mads Pedersen doing this day in day out. You know when he opens up a sprint like that. I did. I was wanting to kind of jump in there. They were missing Kirsch, and uh, you mentioned him. He came up at the right time because with Simmons there, he wasn't quite quick enough. He needed Kirsch there, and Kirsch eventually got there on his own in the right-hand side and made the difference in that sprint. I think that's what they're going through. But coming into this sprint, he is the fastest man here, strongest. Van der Poel, OK, maybe have slimmed down a little bit thinking of the World Championships, but you see him twice kind of looking looking to come past and, and, and didn't make any inroads at all. And uh, we know he's on form after his win yesterday. Um, strong finish here, Mads Pedersen taking the victory. Good to see Fred right up there. The British writer for Bahrain Victorious. Giovanni Lonardi was just about in the top five as well, alongside Fred Wright, who was there or thereabouts, pity a little further down as well. And you could see the inquest happening between Pearson, Simmons and there, and got there just at the right time. It is Mars Pearson, Mathieu Fonderpool, Robin Foadvo, and we're about to get the classified results. Famous last words, of course. Here they are. Pearson, Father Paul, Froidevaux with Laporte and Wright in the top five. Maestri, as well as Ivo Oliveira, Lawrence Pitti, Lorenzo Milesi, and Antonio Tiberi. And Mathieu Father Paul will retain the lead of the Tour of Luxembourg.